These benignly lapping waters conceal what lies a few miles farther out to sea. The Bermuda Triangle has become a symbol for the unknown. But what really lies in this vortex of a mystery? What forces are at work inside its boundaries? I've seen some very strange things happen out there that cannot be dismissed. Are they supernatural? When I penetrated into it, there was some kind of intense electricity going on. Or merely natural. Things can change very rapidly, and rapidly changing weather can catch people unprepared, and that's what makes it dangerous. We are about to journey into the center of an enigma, but using science to replace superstition. The Bermuda Triangle is a tangible mystery. Planes and ships were real, and they did disappear. Facts instead of fears. It was this massive explosion that was caused by electrical sparking. Venturing inside the Bermuda Triangle, Odd events are part of the reality in this area. Aeroplane crashes, boating mishaps, strange disappearance, and bizarre things not easily explained. Even some skeptics admit there are abnormalities in this part of the ocean. Even though I am a scientist, it doesn't surprise me that there are things maybe we can't explain scientifically. That's one thing about the ocean is that the ocean is an extremely powerful force in itself. What can we glean from the chilling distress call from a pilot desperate to find his way home? On board one of the largest cruise ships in the world to find out how an elaborate laboratory is helping scientists shed new light on the unusual conditions that undeniably exist here. They're trying to measure anomalies like sea gases and whirlpools in the Bermuda Triangle. But then we should almost have another histogram where you take the... Freak waves can engulf ships in an instant. Now scientists are looking at the controversial Star Wars program as a way of helping them find those waves before they wreak havoc. Can the bubbles released from deep beneath the surface of the ocean cause disturbances extreme enough to make ships disappear. And what about a theory gaining credence in recent years about the changing boundaries of the Bermuda Triangle? Many people think that the Bermuda Triangle actually is a number of triangles that fan out from Bermuda and cover a large section of the eastern coast of the United States and Caribbean. They point to the rash of air disasters off the coast of Long Island as evidence of the expanding triangle. What really caused flights TWA 800 and Egypt Air 990 to fall from the sky, killing all aboard? Pilot error or something more sinister? Could the tragedy that killed John Kennedy Jr., his wife and her sister, be attributed to some weird magnetic field that affects navigational devices in this expanded area. In the past 50 years, by some estimates, more than a thousand strange events have littered the waters between Miami and Bermuda to the north and Puerto Rico to the south. Bermuda Triangle is a tangible mystery planes and ships were real, and they did disappear. The Explorer of the Seas is one of the largest cruise ships in the world. It sets sail every week from Miami and heads to the Caribbean. Unbeknown to the passengers on the cruise, three floors below the main deck, is a sophisticated laboratory called Ocean Lab. When the ship cruises every week, we can collect very important data on the ocean and the atmosphere. 
It does the same cruise track every single week. When it leaves the dock, our instruments basically turn on. The lab is the first of its kind. It measures changes in the ocean and atmosphere that can help researchers better understand the sea and perhaps unravel some of the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. When you spend a lot of time out at sea, you, be, you really get a wealth of knowledge into how powerful the ocean is and how, how it can change pretty quickly. So there's no doubt in my mind, particularly before we had the kind of information that's available to us today, that ships could be sunk, planes could be downed by squalls, what we call down drafts, all sorts of things that happen out there. Ellen Prager believes the lab will provide valuable information. There's a lot that's going on out there that we really don't understand that well. One of the things we really need to understand is how does the atmosphere interact with the ocean and some of the dynamics in the atmosphere. Sensors located throughout the massive cruise ship measure the level of salt in the water, current speed, and the temperature distribution. Yellow and red indicate areas where the water is warmer. And what you can see here is very warm seawater flowing from the equator up into the Caribbean Sea. They detect things in the water that most people never knew existed. It's hoped that one day this kind of data collection could help researchers predict freak waves, rain squalls, and storms that surprise seagoing vessels. The Atlantic Ocean inside the Bermuda Triangle can be, to say the least, strange. From compasses that stop working to sea gases that rise up to the surface from the depths of the ocean, the water contains many secrets. Dr. Bruce Donado, a physicist at the Naval Postgraduate School, wanted to know how an object could be affected when placed over bubbles in water and whether this could cause boats to suddenly sink. When bubbles are added to water, the fluid becomes less dense. This can be seen in this apparatus. I'll put my finger at the original level of the water. And now, as I add more and more bubbles, you will see that the level rises. This less dense fluid will exert a smaller buoyant force on a floating body. So it appears that it would be possible to sink a floating body if there were enough bubbles. However, the rising bubbles may cause an upward flow of water, and this upward flow of water will exert an upward drag force on the body, propping it up. So it's not obvious that bubbles will, in fact, sink a floating body. But in this experiment, in a very controlled environment in the lab, the upward drag had little effect on the object. I'm turning on the bubbles and slowly increasing the amount of bubbles. And eventually, we get to a point where the body sinks. Donado has just published the results of this experiment. But because it wasn't performed in open ocean, he can't know for sure what would happen if a boat encountered a burst of sea gases like those often found in the Bermuda Triangle. Donado believes there would be less likelihood of a boat sinking in the ocean. In the ocean, it's an entirely different situation. There you have a localized source of bubbles. And there will certainly be, the rising bubbles will certainly cause an upward flow of water in the region of the bubbles and a downward flow of water away from the bubbles. So there will be this large circulatory flow. This upward flow will tend to prop up a body that's floating where the bubbles are. So because of that, we expect that many more bubbles are required to sink an object in the ocean. How many more, Donado says, depends on the buoyancy of the object over the bubbles. And since ocean water is constantly moving, a boat would spend less time over the source of the bubbles. The bottom line, after taking all the variables into consideration, bubbles alone would probably not be enough to cause a boat to sink. Nineteen eighty-four, an annual race of tall ships from Puerto Rico to Bermuda and on to Halifax. The Marquez 
a 120-foot ship built in 1917 in Spain, led the way as the ships left Bermuda. That's when disaster struck. They ran into a squall, which typically is not a problem for a tall ship of this size being 120 feet. But a sudden, strong gust of wind forced the Marquez over to one side. At the same time this took place, a rogue wave coming out of nowhere hit the Marquesi broadside. These are waves as high as 100 feet that seem to come out of nowhere and can sink unsuspecting ships. The wave that hit the Marquez produced a wall of water that engulfed the ship. And then there was a second wave that followed, you know, shortly thereafter, there was the uh, fatal blow to it. And very quickly the ship went down. The tall ship sank in less than a minute. 19 people died. Dr. Graeber believes the Marquez tragedy and other boating disasters in the Bermuda Triangle could be avoided if freak waves could be predicted. From his laboratory at the Rosensteel School of Marine Science of the University of Miami, he's trying to do just that. He uses radar, satellites, and the largest saltwater wave tank in the world to try and understand this silent killer. Freak wave is something that is way out in the spectrum of the types of waves that exist. In the Bermuda Triangle, these waves form in the Gulf Stream along the east coast of the United States. Conditions are ripe when the current of the Gulf Stream, which flows from south to north, conflicts with storm fronts, with winds moving from north to south. And so it's on the backside of the storm where waves would be generated that would travel towards the south. At the same time the Gulf Stream is creating waves flowing north, there is nowhere for the water to go but up. So a 10-foot, 15-foot wave all of a sudden could become a 50-foot monster. And there is no warning to this. Dr. Graeber hopes one day to predict freak waves. That's where the Star Wars technology comes in. The US government hopes to create powerful lasers, point them at enemy missiles and shoot them down. It's those powerful lasers, Dr. Graeber says, that could be used to know when and where freak waves will occur. we could focus a laser beam on the ocean surface. He believes he'd be able to get enough detail about what is happening on the ocean surface to detect freak waves before they happen. That would help merchant vessels, cruise ships and pleasure boats avoid areas where these waves might occur and stay out of harm's way. The technology would help merchant vessels and pleasure boaters alike avoid potentially deadly situations. With his apparatus, he's only able to simulate what a laser could do. And this is a, a very innovative way that you can get information you just couldn't get any other way. But Graeber admits it will be years before lasers powerful enough to be focused from space will be ready to use. Until then, these killer waves will continue to wreak havoc on unsuspecting ships. <laughs>